what if you could click one button and instantly get more realistic lighting and color in your renderings? Turns out, you can. Last month, Keyshot 2023.3 was released with a sneaky little feature called ACES. And in this video, I'm gonna cover what ACES is, how it works, and how you can take advantage of it to create better renderings and animations. See, ACES is used in the film and gaming industries a bit differently than it's used in Keyshot. And to understand how it works and the true benefits of it, I need to cover some of the basics of color science. So ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System and it's a color management framework for films. But what exactly does color management mean? Well, first we need to begin with light. The light we see as humans is just a thin sliver of the electromagnetic wave spectrum. See, we see different frequencies of these waves as different colors. Digital cameras produce colored light in the form of percentages of pure red, green, and blue on a per pixel basis. But how exactly do we define that pure red, green, or blue? That's why color spaces were invented. See, scientists have precisely measured the wavelengths within the visible spectrum and mapped them out onto a graph that looks a little bit like a rainbow-colored horseshoe. Now, you've probably heard of the term color space. A color space is just a triangle that sits on top of this graph, and it defines the purest red, green, or blue that a device is either capable of capturing or reproducing. Points outside of the triangle cannot be reproduced or captured by a device which uses that color space. Now, the bigger the color space is, the more colors it can capture or reproduce. Today, most high-end cameras actually capture images in a larger color space than most of our computer screens can display. When we know the color space of an image, we can transform it to any other color space as long as we use the correct math, which is typically handled by something called a transform function. Tools for this will vary depending on whatever software you're using. Now, let's look at a familiar example. Imagine we want to take an image captured on camera A and we want to view it on display X. But if each device has its own color space, what do we do? Well, if we transform the image from camera A's color space to the display X's color space, then we can view an accurate reproduction of what camera A captured on display X. This is called color management. And without color management, the color and luminance or brightness of an image might not be preserved as it moves from one digital device to another. And finally, this is where ACES comes into play. ACES is a user-friendly system for making these transformations with support for a wide range of cameras and displays. And this is why ACES is used within film production. It's not uncommon to need to combine footage that's been captured on cameras, each of which might use their own color space, and with entire teams of colorists, editors, CG artists, and compositors, the need for color management grows even more to ensure that the image looks correct as it undergoes color grading, editing, compositing, and mastering. To use ACES correctly in most software, color management needs to be carefully considered to ensure all elements can be properly combined to create a convincing final result. So if ACES makes it easier to combine live action footage with computer generated footage, then why would we need that in Keyshot? Well, there's another benefit to using ACES, and it has to do with the way color and highlights are displayed within an image. ACES provides a more natural path to white. If you shine a light at a color gradient in Keyshot and increase the brightness, eventually the millions of colors in the gradient are reduced to six distinct hues, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. This is how images can break down under bright lighting conditions and produce a less desirable image. Now let's do the same thing, but with the ACES image transform enabled. You'll see that the hue shift is minimized and the colors become less saturated as the light becomes brighter. We call this a filmic response because it's how celluloid responds to exposure. The result is that your images should look more like a photograph, helping you produce a more natural and realistic looking appearance. Let's go ahead and set up an image to render in ACES inside of Keyshot. All we need to do is create a new image style, enter photographic mode, then choose the ACES image transform. You'll notice how gray and washed out your image looks. This is by design, but you'll notice an added benefit in that you have much greater dynamic range in your scene without overexposure. So feel free at this time to increase the brightness of your light sources in your scene as needed. To get the best results when using ACES in Keyshot, you'll likely need to do some post-production on your image. This is because of something called tone mapping. Tone mapping is looking at the full dynamic range in the scene from the darkest darks to the brightest brights, and then remapping them so that we don't get any clipping or loss of data. The other benefit of ACES tone mapping is something called roll-off, which refers to the transition between highlights, mid-tones, and darker values. An overly harsh or steep transition between these values can ruin an image, 
Aces is known for providing a nicer highlight roll-off. Now, when it comes to post-production, you have two options. Either use the sliders inside of Keyshot's Image Styles tab to make any color corrections before rendering your image, or you can render out a flat-looking image and do your color correction in another software of your choosing. For most of you, the exposure, contrast, hue, saturation, and curve sliders in Keyshot are all that you're gonna need to make your image look nice before rendering. This is the simplest approach and should streamline your workflow quite a bit. Now, what if you wanna do your color correction in a software outside of Keyshot? Generally speaking, I recommend rendering out an EXR file. All EXR files created by Keyshot are linear and have 32 bits of color depth. This makes them ideal for compositing and can undergo extreme color correction before breaking down. The issue though with EXRs is that your computer monitor can only display between 8 and 10 bits of color depth and it's got a gamma curve, meaning it does not display light in a linear fashion. The result of this is that when you open an EXR image in a third-party editing app, it's going to look dark and overly saturated. So unless you use an image display transform, your image won't look correct in 32-bit mode until you adjust the exposure and saturation to your liking. After making adjustments, you can export an 8-bit JPEG for sharing online while keeping your working files at 32 bits should you need to make a change later on. While I'm clearly a fan of VXRs, not all software supports this file format. You can render a 32-bit Photoshop document from Keyshot, but I will say that Photoshop's 32-bit editing capabilities are currently a bit limited. Eventually, you'll be forced to convert your image to 16 bits to gain access to all of Photoshop's editing tools. Now, if you prefer to use Lightroom for post-production, then you'll want to render as a 32-bit TIFF file. I'd argue this is a better approach than relying on Photoshop for color correction. As for most other software like Affinity Photo, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion Studio, After Effects, and Krita, you're best off rendering an EXR file. Keyshot EXRs may be a bit large, but they are open source, offer high compatibility, and are lossless. If you do need to open an EXR file in Photoshop, then you'll have to install a free plugin called EXRIO, which I recommend and have linked up down below. Now, if you plan on rendering out an EXR file, I highly recommend installing DJV Viewer. It's a great standalone application used for playing and displaying EXR files and EXR image sequences. I'll also drop a link to that down below. So to summarize, proper linear workflow is not something you should need to adopt when working with images rendered out of Keyshot. It's only relevant for projects that combine renderings with other footage with different color spaces. And if you want to avoid using any third-party software for post-production, here's what I suggest you do. Just make all your adjustments in the Image Styles tab within Keyshot and render your image as an 8-bit JPEG or PNG. This way, you can enjoy the benefits of Keyshot's ACES Image Transform without trying to adopt a confusing and tedious color-managed workflow that spans across multiple software packages. Till next time, Happy rendering.